So if you have these five traits, then cybersecurity pen testing is for you. And here's the thing, you might have the perfect traits for cybersecurity right now and don't even know it. So we definitely gotta, we gotta fix that if that's the case, right? And, and don't get too disheartened if you watch this video and you're like, I don't have all five of these traits or I don't have any of these traits because most of them can be developed. So the first one is that you love figuring out how things work, right? You're one of those people that it's not enough just to accept something is a certain way. You want to you wanna look into the inner workings. You want to dig into how it actually is working, right? And one example of this is I was always really interested in uh, DDoS, like denial of service or forget about the distributed part for a second, just DOS, right? Well, I'll say like denial of service. And I was like, well, how, how can you actually cause denial of service? And so I started digging into that stuff. This was like way back when I was in college and I was like first learning all this stuff. And I came to find out like, okay, there's a, a bunch of different ways where you can, you know, knock someone offline or make something unavailable, a service unavailable. So, you know, I, the natural like tinkerer that I am, I wanted to get hands on and play around with some of this stuff. So I remember when I went home one time, I got in like an argument with my little brother one time. And this is like after I figured out that I could like, you know, DOS people offline off my local network just by like creating a script that the router read that just said like, hey, if you see any packets come from this IP address, drop the packet. So like I figured out what his local IP address was and I just had him had it drop the packet, basically kicked him offline. He was like playing some online game at the time. We got in an argument. I think he was like playing World of Warcraft or something. And I just ran that, I ran that script um, using uh, I think Ettercap or something. And it, it knocked him offline and he was like pissed and it, it was hilarious. <laughs> so, so I definitely get hands on with this. You know, obviously don't be dosing people uh, without authorization. Maybe if it's your brother or something, he's being bratty, then that might be something fun to do. But yeah, definitely be responsible with this for sure. Number two is that you're able to think outside of the box. So you don't have to be super artsy, creative type. But you definitely want to start thinking outside the box if you don't already, because that's basically what hacking is at its core. Hacking doesn't mean anything illegal or anything like that, contrary to popular belief. It's all about finding creative solutions to problems. So just just go in knowing that and be willing to break the status quo and the rules are made to be broken. So yeah, definitely keep that in mind when you're pen testing, even if you're not a naturally outside the box type of thinker. This is something that can add extra depth and it's something that can be honed and developed over time for sure. Number three is that you are okay with delayed gratification, okay? This is extremely important. It is something that you can develop as well, but if you do not have this mindset, this is a shift that if you make it today and you're really able to, to really sit with it and really truly make this change in yourself, it's going to be absolutely essential. There, this is not optional. For this one, you have to adhere to this or you're just simply not going to make it very far in this field. If you look at anyone, anyone at all that is a very skilled pen tester, very technical pen tester, what you'll notice is that they have this trait. So definitely develop this if you haven't already. And here's the thing as well, right? You know, right now, wherever you're at, this is the most difficult pen testing will ever be for you. If you don't quit, if you keep going, this is the most difficult it'll ever be for you. Because here's the thing, right now, there's more stuff that you don't know than there ever will be if you keep learning, right? So here's the thing. If you just keep chipping away at it day by day and um, the success will come over time, but it's going to take time, right? It's going to take time. It's going to take the hardship as well. A lot of learning this stuff is enduring some of the pain that we have to go through as pen testers. It's part of the learning process. And even once you're on top of the mountain, so to speak, it's still going to be hard. So just get, you know, just get acclimated with the idea that, you know, it's going to take some time and that you're not going to see instant results. You might spend a week, spend a few weeks and not really feel like you're going anywhere. But then in like two months from now, you might notice like, wow, you look back, you're like, wow, I made all this progress or you're making all this progress at once. A lot of people, what they expect is that their success is going to be this linear progression. That's almost never how it works in any endeavor, really. Usually it looks more like this, like sideways, sideways, sideways. Then you like have a astronomical leap to the next level and then you kind of level off and it's just, and it's kind of like a, a stair stepping pattern, if you will. But yeah, don't, don't expect instant results and don't get disheartened 
if you don't see it right away. That is the number one mistake that people make across fields, really. So number four is that you seek careers where there's always more to learn. Obviously, I talk about this a lot on my channel if you watch a lot of my videos, but basically, one way I can illustrate this is when I first started out uh, my career in general, I started as a backup and recovery administrator. So that was on the IT operations side. And the thing about that job was it was pretty cool in the beginning because everything was new to me. I was learning about what an IT organization looks like, what like the different... It had a lot of sysadmin components of it that were pretty interesting. I got to use Linux a lot, you know, Windows a lot. I got to use all the operating systems. It was cool. But what I quickly found out was after a few months, I pretty much learned everything there was to learn about the job. And from there, it just became about clicking buttons. And all of that excitement that I had in the beginning went away because I'm the type of person that I always... I'm looking for more ways to learn and level up. I, I always want to. I always want to have something to uh, to aspire to, right? And so, if you think in that way, then this is a great field for you because, like I say all the time, you'll never know everything. No one does. There's always. But what that means at the flip side, there's two ways to look at this, right? The first way to look at this is, I'll never know everything, so what's the point, right? Or we'll never know everything. I'll always be inferior to like this other person who knows this thing that I don't. And, or you could also say like, I want to know everything, but I can't, and I just don't have enough time, right? These are all ways that uh, you can look at it and it's going to make it a lot harder for you. But instead, one way you can look at this is I get to keep learning in this field. I get to keep learning, right? I can always have something new to learn. I can always have something new to aspire to. And no matter how much time I put into this stuff and no matter how many skills I develop, there'll always be something else uh, that I can go for. And to me, that's really exciting. That's part of what makes this field so great. Number five is that you actually enjoy it, right? I mean, this is like, it shouldn't come as too much of a surprise. If you're actually having fun with this stuff in general, right, most of the time, then it's going to be easier to stick to it, to do it, right? Now, here's the thing. If you came into this with a huge excitement for it, and then you lost that excitement, that doesn't mean that you don't enjoy it, you know? I, I think that's where a lot of people get it wrong. They think that, oh, if I enjoy something, I should be wanting to do it 100% of the time, right? Like, I love making YouTube videos. I don't really feel like making a YouTube video right now, but I, I push through that, right? And because here's the thing, motivation is going to come and it's going to fade, right? You can't count on motivation always being there, but you can keep, you know, just pushing through that and just keep learning a little bit every day. Okay. Maybe you feel a ton of resistance for doing something. Okay. Maybe you dial it back just a little bit in terms of the number of hours, but you're still putting in some time every day, right? And what you're going to find is eventually that motivation that you once had, it's going to come back. And this is really the key because there's two approaches to it, right? One is like the person that every time they don't feel like doing it, they, they quit for a while. And then they realize that I actually did want to do this thing. And then they come back, right? Like how many times have you had something that you were going for really intensely, whatever it might be? Uh, maybe you were trying to learn a language, for example. And let's say like you're trying to learn Japanese just as an example, right? And you went super hard trying to learn Japanese for like a month. You studied every day for like four hours a day. And then all of a sudden that motivation just completely vanished, completely faded. And you get, you, you know, you started to rationalize in your head. Well, you know, for this reason and this reason, I, I probably shouldn't be putting as much time into this right now. I think it would be a smarter move if I put time into this other thing, the certification over here, because that can get me money right now and I need that. And then I can go back in, you know, three months, I'm going to go back into Japanese and, you know, right? Like you could be like super logical about this and you could present a sound argument. That is just a really high level way of tricking your brain, tricking you into thinking that, you know, you don't want to do this as like not a smart decision, right? You're rationalizing it. And this is really tricky to catch when your brain does this, right? But then what happens, right? You know, months later you come back and you're like, well, I actually really did want to learn Japanese. So I'm going to start doing that again, right? And then it's a cycle. It happens over and over again. So what instead you want to do is you want to cultivate that ability to be able to put in the work even when you don't feel like this is so crucial, right? And that eventually that motivation will come back because it's what you truly wanted. So what do you think of the list? Have, do you share any of these traits? So I would love to know down in the comments section below. And like I was saying earlier, if you don't have all these traits, don't beat yourself up. 
a lot of these can be developed, right? Like the, the ability to just push through, you know, and keep going even when you don't feel like doing it, which is one of the big keys, right? You can develop the mindset to think outside the box, et cetera. You, you can develop almost all of these skills. And if you do have these traits, then congratulations. Now the next step is definitely to get to work. So I would recommend if you don't know where to start, you're completely new, check out the Absolute Beginners Roadmap to Pen Testing. I'll have that on the screen for you right now. I'll see you guys over there. Thanks for watching.